Yes. Okay. So we look at linear motion. Actually, we are through with linear motion now. We are through with the linear motion. So here we look at the key terms. We look at the terms used, term used. We also look at equation of, equation of what? Motions. Then we also did what? We did what? We did calculations. So under linear motion, we said linear motion is again divided into two. We have horizontal motion. Horizontal what? Horizontal motion. And for horizontal motion, the three equation of motions are V equals to U plus AT, S equals to UT plus a half, AT squared. Then V squared equals to U squared plus two. A what? AS, that is for horizontal motion. Then when you come to vertical motion, vertical motion, vertical motion, where some you would refer to it as motion under gravity. This one, we call it motion under what? Under gravity. Okay. Now this time the acceleration will change to acceleration due to gravity. Then under, under vertical motion, again, is divided into two. We have downward, down one what? Motion. Where for downward motion, the equation of motion will change. Where the acceleration due to acceleration will change to acceleration due to gravity will be a positive V. Which means our equation motion will be V. Then our S, sorry, S will change to be the height. S will change to be the height. So which means V is equals to U plus G, G T. That is one. Then H equals to U T plus a half gt squared. Then the last one, v squared equals to u squared plus two g, two g what? H. Then we also look at upward motions. Upward what? Upward motions. Where for this case, the acceleration will be equals to negative, negative g. So which means our equation and s will still be equals to h, still remains height. So our equation motion now will be V equals to U minus G T. H equals to U T minus a half G T squared. Then V squared equals to U squared minus two G, two G H. Are we together? Yes. Yes. So those are the things we look at basically. Stephen has gone. So those are the equation of motion we look at. Then we did calculation on this. We did calculation, we did very many. So I think if you get time, you download this book and then I think, you, do you have these notes? No. You go to the website and download the book, okay? And you copy them. I don't know whether you want to copy or you can print them. If you can print them well and good, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's because now when we come here, we just go through them very fast. So that's just a big, a brief background on what we have already learned. We did calculations. Stephen and Baptist, they were there. I think we move on together and we are. I think for you, Sandra, if you, you can, co the notes are very simplified. The notes are so simplified. If you, get, if you download them, you can go through very fast as long as you have understood this concept very well, okay? Yes. So let's look at another aspect, another aspect of motion, which is projectile motion. Subheading projectile motion. Projectile motion. Projectile motion. Projectile what? Motion. motion. Now, members, when we talk of projectile motion, projectile motion is still motion under gravity. You still fall under the class of what? You still motion under what? Gravity. Motion under what? Gravity. Gravity. The only difference with projectile motion is this time the body is given an initial speed or initial velocity is given initial what? Velocity. Initial velocity and left. Gravity. And what? And left to move. And left to move. 
under the influence and like to move under the influence of what? Gravity. Okay? okay. Members, are we together? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we said projected motion, this is the motion of a body where, where, which after being given initial velocity, move under the influence of gravity. Or you can say this is a type of motion where a body given initial velocity, after given initial velocity, move under the influence of gravity. That type of motion is what we call projectile motion. Projectile motion. motion. Where do we, what are the examples of projectile motion members? In real life, example of projectile motion. Steven. Steven. Yes, Sandra. Sandra? Yes. yes. You play you play netball, not so. No. You don't play netball, but you have ever watched net people playing netball. Yes. Uh-huh. When you look at the the motion of the ball, eh, of the netball, which path do you think is which motion do you think is describing? Which motion do you think is describing? I think it's projectile motion. Yeah, uh, it's projecting is what? It's describing a projectile what? Motion. Because motion. the person offers to what? To throw the ball. Okay. In the process of training, you are yes. given you are given the net the ball initial what? Initial velocity. So after throwing it, you leave it, and then the body will move under the influence of under the influence of what? Gravity. Gravity. That Gravity. is one. That is one. Okay? Okay? Yes. Yes. Play, playing netball, we can apply them in playing what? Net what? Netball, netball. basketball, eh? okay? Basketball, even volleyball, okay? Okay? Football. So the path the, the football describes, the path described is what? Is a projected what? Motion, okay? Then also, if you look at it critically, have you seen when people are playing a cricket? Are you seeing cricket? Cricket? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which means we can also apply them in what? In what? Cricket. Batting. Batting of cricket. Batting cricket. Okay? That is it. Those are the, those are some of the examples we have. Then also releasing, releasing objects, releasing objects or bombs from aeroplane. From what? Aeroplane. So when you release a body from aeroplane, the path the body will pr protect, the body will take is what? Is also a projectile, what? Is also a projectile motion. Mm -hmm. Someone can also talk of throwing a what? Throwing a what? A stone. A stone. Okay. Yes. Now those are those are the brief introduction we can give about projectile motion. Now let's look at. Let's pick one example of them and then we we'll see how we can describe it. Members, we have two ways you can project a body. We have two ways you can project a body. One, you can project a body from the ground level, from the ground what? Level, or from a given height, or from a given, or from a given what? Height above, sorry, above, the ground level, about the ground. So those are the two ways we can project a body. You can either project a body from the ground or from a given height above the what? The ground. Okay? Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Okay. Now let's look at the first case. The way they're saying, consider a ball projected at O with an initial speed U with an initial speed u at meters per second at an angle to the horizontal, with an angle to the horizontal, with an angle to the horizontal, with an angle to the 
to the horizontal. With an angle to the horizontal. So let's catch that. Let's catch that. So this is the point of projection. I'm just going to go through it briefly, please. Members, these notes you have them. You must, after this lesson, go and download the book. So the path will be like this. So this will be the path followed by the projectile. So it projectile has two components. Projectile has two what? Components. We have the vertical components and then the horizontal components. So the speed must be tangential to the path. The speed must be tangential to the path. So the speed will be like that. So this is the speed u. That is the speed u. So this is the x direction, this is the y direction. So, and it's projected at a given angle, theta. It's projected at a given angle, what? Theta. So members, when you look at that, we can generate two components of velocity. This u is the, is the resultant velocity. This is the resultant velocity. But what are the components that form up this? So when you look at that, when you form a simple triangle there, you find that the vertical component of u will be, this one will be u, u what? u sine what? u sine theta, not so? That one will be u sine theta. Then here we shall have u cos what? u cos what? cos theta, if you remember. If you remember very well, mm -hmm. let me say this is from point O up to point. Let me say, let me say point B here, then point what? Then point, point C. So I'm going to use it to describe everything here. This is going to form our maximum what? This is the maximum height. That's the maximum height. Then at this point, when the ball is here, it will also have two components of velocity. It will also have two components of velocity. We should look at it one by one. This is one. So let's call this one V. This is VX. Then this is V. V what? VY. That is VY. So when we resolve the velocity, you find we have U sine theta, U cos theta. Then, So it implies that, it implies that our UY is equals to U cos, I mean U, U sine theta, and UX is equals to U cos, cos theta, U cos theta. So those are the important components that you have to take note of there. So we are saying the equation one is, a, those are the components which I was explaining. Members, are we together on that? Yes. Good. Now let's look at, the, let's come now to this diagram here. Mathematical formula using projectiles. Using projectiles. Use in projectiles. So I still, I, like I've told you, this is motion still under motion, under what? Gravity. So which means you must also remember, remember, remember equation of motions. Remember equation of what? Motions. Under, under what? Under, under vertical motions, where we said V is equals to U plus GT, H equals to UT plus a half GT squared, then V squared equals to U squared plus two G H. When do we use this formula? This is when the body is what? This is when is it? This is done what, what? Done what? Downward motion. Motion. But when we come to upward motion, upward motion, our A will be equal to negative what? Negative G. G. So you can see in this component, we have two scenarios here. One, at this point, the body is still going up. No, so at this point, the body is still going what? Up, which means it's moving, which mean it's moving against gravity. Which means if it's going up, which means our acceleration must be negative what? Negative G. Then at, after reaching point B, which is the maximum height, which is the maximum what? Height. The body is now coming down. It's coming what? Down. When it's coming down, so at this point, our A is equals to negative what? G. 
Then at this point, A is equal to what? A is equal to positive. Positive what? Positive G. Have you seen that? Yes. Uh-huh. Then this now, these are the final velocities. Remember, this was initial. Now these are the final velocities in the different directions. So Vx, then Vy. Then the speed at which the ball will eat the ground. The ball will reach the ground. Let me put it well there. Huh? Let me put it well there. Huh? Is this? That speed now we shall call it the final velocity. What? The final velocity, what? V. So which means if I want to find V, the final speed, the final velocity with which the ball will eat the ground, I need to know Vx and I need to know V what? Vy. Okay? You see that this is forming a triangle. This is forming a what? Eh? A triangle. So which means to get this velocity V, you just what? You just use Pythagoras what? Pythagoras theorem. Then you can find, you can find V. Let's, but let's see how we can how we find Vx and Vy. How do we find Vx and Vy? Mm -hmm. Let's see how we find Vx and Vy. Mm -hmm. Finding velocities at any time t. So now we want to find velocity. So V is equals to Vx. The man we said was Ux, Ux plus a t. Yeah, I want to find horizontal motion, horizontal velocity. This is horizontal what? Velocity. Which is it? Vx. So our V, V will be equals to Ux plus, plus. Remember, the body is going up. Remember, I mean, remember the body is moving horizontally. When the body is moving horizontally, remember, there is no what? Acceleration. There's no what? Eh? Acceleration because this is motion under gravity. So which means when the body is moving horizontally, which means our gt will be equal to that. So therefore, gt will be equal to zero meters per what? Per second what? Squared. Because it's under horizontal motion. So when here, when the body is here, when the body is moving horizontally, there is no acceleration due to gravity. Is there any acceleration due to gravity when the body is moving horizontally? No. Acceleration is only experienced when a body is moving either vertically upward or vertically downwards. Okay? So at that instance, which means when a body is moving or when an horizontal motion, the acceleration due to gravity will be zero. So which means our V will be equal to U what? Ux. But what is Ux? What is Ux? We say, therefore, our V will be equal to U cos what? Cos what? Theta. Cos theta. Have you seen that? Members, have you seen that? Yes. Uh -huh. The same applies to, uh -huh. now let's look for vertical velocity. Let's see for the Vy. So this was our final velocity, Vx. Mm -hmm. So vertical velocity, vertical velocity, which is Vy. So which means our Vy will be equals to, still using the same formula, is going to be Uy plus, members, this time is moving up, a t. So which means if it's moving up, which means our acceleration will be equal to negative what? Will be equal to negative? <laughs> negative g. So it implies that vy is equal to uy minus g minus g what? t. But what was our uy? Remember our uy was equal to u, u sine what? Sine theta. Sine theta. So which means therefore vy will be equal to u cos theta minus what? Minus g what? Have you seen that? Teacher, no. It's sine theta. Hey, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Sine what? Theta. Dy is equal to u sine theta minus g minus g t. Okay? Yes. Are we together on that? Yes. yes. Good. Now, if I want to find this one now, the final velocity with which the ball or the object will eat the ground, which is here. I think this one, members, I've seen this. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So Vx, we have got Vx. Then we have also got V, Vy. So now, which means we cannot fail to get this using what? Pythagoras what? Theory. Using Pythagoras theory. So the final... The final velocity with which, with which, the ball, the ball 
or the object will eat the what? Will eat the what? The ground. It's going to be V equals to the square root of VX squared plus VY what? VY what? Squared. Squared. Like I've told you when we are discussing, Stephen told us that velocity is a vector quantity. Velocity is a vector what? Is a vector quantity, quantity which means it must have what? Directions. Where will the direction be? Where will the direction be, members? The direction will be here, not so? This will be the what? The direction what? Let's call it, hey, this one is theta. Let's call it, let's call it beta. Alpha. Let's call it what? Beta. We can we can use any we can use any symbol, okay? Okay. We can use any symbol. Mm -hmm. It's beta. So which means this is the angle we want. So are we going to find that? Which property are we going to use there? Which trigonometric ratio are we going to use? Is it tangent? Is it cosine? Is it sine? Which one? Which one are we going to use? Look at it well. If I'm to put this one here. You find that this one is still what? This one is still Vy, not so? So the angle is here, the angle is here. So which means it's opposite adjacent. Opposite adjacent is what? Opposite adjacent is what? Is tan. Opposite is what? So which means direction, direction, direction of V is, mm -hmm, is given by, is given by, so we shall have tan what? Tan beta, depending on which angle you have used, is going to be Vy over V what? Vx. So which means beta is equal to the other tan, the other tan of Vy over V what? Over V what? Vx. And this angle always, always to the horizontal, always to the what? Eh? To the horizontal. Are we together? Is it clear, members? Yes. That is for the velocity. That is the velocity. What about distance? Now let's look at distance. 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 Mm -hmm. Distance, which means we are going to use this equation of motion. We are going to use the second equation of motion. Okay. So here yes. we use using second what? Equation. Equation of motion. Mm -hmm. I said if it's horizontally, if it's what? Eh? Horizontally. Horizontally. So let's start with horizontal distance. Horizontal what? Horizontal distance. Horizontal distance. Mm -hmm. So which means S equals to UT plus a half AT what? Let me use AT squared. AT what? Squared. Square. Now, we said, remember, I said when is horizontal, which means A which is equal to B must be equal to what? Eh? Zero meters per what? Zero meters per second. Uh huh. If that is true, which means our ux, our ux must be equal to u cos what? Cos theta. theta. Uh huh. So that distance we can call it x. Distance at any time t. Distance at any time what? T. So which means let's call that distance x. So x will be equals to x will be equals to. Which means I'll have u x t plus a half. 80 what? 80 squared. So when I substitute there for x will be equals to u cos theta, cos theta what? Cos theta t plus plus zero, not so? Because when I sub, our a is zero, so which means if I substitute everything will vanish there. So therefore our x is equals to u cos theta what? Cos theta what? Cos theta t. Gee. That is it. Distance at any time t. Distance at any time, at any time t. What about vertical distance? What about vertical distance? 
vertical distance at any time at any time t mm -hmm. so i will call that distance y i will call that distance what y so which means our y will be equals to u y t plus a half a t what squared now this time the body is moving up so which means our a is equals to negative what our a is equals to negative g so therefore our sorry therefore our y is equals to is equals to what was our ui ui was what u sine sine theta sine theta so we shall have y equals to u sine theta. sine theta what sine theta t, t. Minus, minus a half g t g t squared good therefore let me write it well therefore our y is equals to u sine theta t minus a half g t squared have you seen that yes yes uh-huh those are some of the the calculation which should not leave out when you are dealing with projectile motion when you are dealing with projectile motion so let's look at some of the terms term used in projectiles term used in what projectiles term used in projectiles term used in projectiles one is maximum height one is maximum what one is maximum height term used in projectors term used in projectors one is it maximum maximum or greatest or greatest what height so which we just call it i max okay so now members if you remember very well how we are dealing with vertical motion, vertical motion, when we are still dealing with it, vertically upward motion. But this time is vertical, but it's only that it's projected to a given angle. It's projected with a given angle because that's the difference between it and projectile. Let's give the difference between it and projectile. And we discovered at maximum height, at maximum height, the final velocity is what? If you remember, what is the final velocity at maximum height? We said at maximum height, at maximum height, the final velocity is equal to zero meters per what? Stephen, do you remember that? Stephen, do you remember that? Yes? Sandra, do you, know, do you remember that? We said at maximum height, the final velocity is zero. Zero meters. Uh -huh. If the final velocity is zero, if the final velocity is zero. Now, let's look at our equation of motion now. Let's go back to our equation of motion. Mm -hmm. So, using, using the third equation of motion, using the third equation of what? Of what? Eh? Of motion, which is V squared equals to U squared plus. 2a what? 2ax. Mm -hmm. We said when a body is moving under vertical, the distance now becomes the what? That distance becomes the what? The height. Okay? Height. So now, which means, since it's vertical motion, so I will say, and it's moving upward. So which means our a is equal to negative what? Negative what? Negative g. Negative g. Uh -huh. So which means it implies that vy squared i think that vy squared equals to uy squared minus 2 g what minus 2 g what h okay yes mm -hmm. but vy vy is equal to what zero meters per what per second the final velocity at the final velocity that okay at maximum height okay uh huh. If that is true, so which means we shall remain with our formula now. We shall be, we shall have h max, h max equals to when I want to make this on the subject. So we shall have v squared minus u squared over two what? 
Over two what? Over two B. Uh huh. So it implies that our H max, H max is equals to the final velocity, which is zero. 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 So that when I bring this one, this side, this one should be plus. Not so. That one should be yes. plus. Should be plus. Good. So zero plus what is our u y? This should be u y. U y was what? Is u sine theta? Sine theta. But what? But squared over two g. So therefore, our h max, our maximum height will be u squared sine squared theta over what? Over two. Over two g. Have you seen it? Have you seen that? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's how we get maximum height. That's how we get maximum height. You have learned trigonometry, you should know how, you should know how to look at that. you should know how to get that squared. Okay. Is the is the excuse the, me, teacher? Yes, please. Chapa sweep it on this part here, which is height max v squared plus u y squared over two g. Yeah, from here, I've made I've made it the subject. If you make it the subject, mm. okay. Yes. Yeah, if you make it the subject, you come to this, okay. Okay. Yes. Good. So we have one minute and thirty seconds remaining. So is there any question so far? Is there any question? Remember, is there any question so far? We are together. So that's how we find that's how we find maximum height. So if they ask you to define maximum height as applied in projected, you say this is the maximum height or the greatest height attained by a projecting what? Body. Okay. So maximum height. Maximum height. Excuse me. Yes, please. The substitution is wrong, eh? Yes. V y squared equals to u y squared minus two h. Mm -hmm. H max will be equal to u y squared minus v y squared over two v. Minus. Check well. Check well, Stephen. Not a plus. Should be plus. V. Yes, because additions. Remember, addition as associative. Addition are commutative. Sorry. Additions are what? Eh? Commutative. Uh, commutative. That's why 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus? 2. Yes, there's no difference in that one, Stephen. Okay? Stephen, have you got? All right. So, maximum.